no, not be able to play everything. Ideally. Oh, we get a very good pull. Scoot Swarm in play first. We have a Fable Passage to crack. Should we hold the phone? I think we should hold the phone. By golly, let's hold the phone. Right? Hit for six? Sure, why not? Woo! Let's end our turn. Mmm, I love you, Sterix. I love you. Uh, retreat, this is good. Don't get me wrong. We've got ourselves a match. We're not going zero and two that easy. Give us our win. Let us play round three. Not even the Great Henge can save you. <laughs> you know, the deck doesn't have Gem Razor in it. Uh, that's a thing, I guess. Apparently, the creator thought, no, no need. Oh, wow. Uh, full hand. And they're doing a really good job at making all of this connect. Oh, everybody gets Trample. And the plus ones they put on. That's so good. It's so good. Right? This Selesnya counters deck is insane. I have it on my channel if you're interested in seeing it. Um, this is going to be a massive upset here. They're still willing to play at this point. If they could just see what we have in hand. What's our library look like? 21. We have to be cautious with that. That's actually... Uh, you know, something to be aware of. Yup. Land, that's fine. Land, that's fine. Cool. Underneath. And we are not bouncing that giant killer. LOL. But both of these mentors can go... We can play a land that triggers the scoop. Take action there. Take action here. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. You may have seen my free to play mutate deck a while back. It blew up. This is the icing on the cake, you guys. Omnath took over. It was hard to really play the mutate deck. It got overshadowed. But with that all being dealt with and gone, it's Mutate's time to shine. We have the Scoot Swarm in our classic Mutate deck. That means whenever we copy itself with a land drop, the Scoot Swarm will actually copy with the Mutates uh, on it, right? So if the Scoot Swarm is a 3-4 Great Horn, it's going to copy into more 3-4 Great Horns, which is absolutely incredible and terrifying at the same time. So again, this deck reached top Mythic rank 1000. I'm playing it within the top 1500 Mythic. Uh, it's very, very good. You may have seen my free to play Mythic, uh, free to play Mutate deck prior to this. So, you know, you probably have a pretty good grasp on how the deck operates. And now we're just fine tuning it and crushing into Mythic. So we're gonna take a look at the deck list, the deck strategies, all of that. We'll watch some gameplay footage, break down all of our play lines, interactions, and then come full circle with our closing thoughts. If you find any value, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share to a friend, hit that bell icon so you're notified of all of our future your uploads we have a 500,000 gem giveaway free cash prize tournaments every single month don't miss out today we're using mtga arena assistant link available in the overwolf link description below easy peasy lemon squeezy install that it's free to use it's got all the information that you'll ever need with that all out of the way let's get into simic mutate which again is a mythic rank deck starting out with one copy of Chainweb Arichner. This is a 1-2 with reach. When it enters the battlefield, deal damage equal to its power to target creature with flying that an opponent controls. So sorry, Mr. Rogue. Get out of here. It gets better than that though, because doing one damage, you know, that's not the great. You can hit a little rogue. You're not hitting uh, the Thought Thief or anything. However, when it escapes for five plus four other cards from your grave, it comes out with three plus one plus one counters on it. 
the ability of course re-triggers it's going to be a four five so you can take out basically any rogue they control three copies of the gilded goose a zero two with flying when it enters the battlefield creative food so you know not only does this help us ramp but it is a mutate target for us as well we can pay two to tap it to create a food and of course tap it to sacrifice a food adding one mana of any color to our pool into our two drops we have tangled uh floridon i don't even know or tangled veil this comes in tapped adding a green source to our pool and then the creature is a one one in which we can tap for a green source to our pool as well two copies of scavenging ooze a two two in which we can pay one to exile target card from a graveyard if it was a creature card put a plus one plus one counter on the ooze and gain one life okay that's all right deal with the croak says there four copies of baby godzilla rune reborn or polywog symbiote this is a one three and each creature you uh have that has mutate will cost one less so this is really nice it's going to reduce the cost of most of our spells within the deck whenever you cast a creature spell if it has mutate draw a card then discard a card you know just to cycle through your deck to get what you need into our three drops a single copy of c dash or octopus a 2-2 with flash mutate cost for two so very cheap here and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you get to draw a card sure three copies oh sorry four copies let's be clear about that of scoot swarm a 1-1 one, one with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token if you control six or more lands create a token copy of scoot swarm and of course those copies will just have a nice doubling effect uh and go absolutely exponential on your opponent and like i talked about with the mutate the mutate creatures will copy as well into our four drops three copies of the parcel beast a two four mutate for two we can pay one to tap it looking at the top card of our library if it's a land card putting it into the battlefield if you don't put the card into the battlefield so if it's not a land you'll put it into your hand very cool because this can act as a blocker you can block with it and then on your opponent's end step you can tap it for one to do that ability Four copies of Migratory Great Horn, a 3-4, mutate for three. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Awesome, right? We want to flood the field with land for our Scoot Swarm, uh, and again, to play our Sterics as well. So the Great Horn is just my favorite card within the deck. Moving onward, we have four copies of the Dream Tail Huron, a 3-4 with flying, mutate for four. Whenever it mutates, draw a card. You know, the flying is good, gets evasion, and drawing a card is not bad either. Moving on, we have one copy of the Pouncing Shore Shark. 4-3 with Flash. Mutate for 4. Whenever it mutates, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. I love just bouncing the opponent's baddies back. Four copies of Auspicious Sterics. 6-6. Six, six. Mutate for 6. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards where X is the number of times that this creature has mutated. Put those permanents into the battlefield. So the lands come in play. They're going to trigger the Scoot Swarm. You know, more creatures come in play, which is just generally good. We have things that can come and play like Vivian Monsters Advocate, Legendary Planeswalker with three loyalty when she enters. Static abilities of looking at the top card of your library anytime. And we actually get to cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. Plus one, create a 3-3 three, three green beast with reach, vigilance, or trample. And minus two, whenever you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, putting it into the battlefield. That is uh, not it, though. Of course, we do have a single copy of Ghidorah, King of the Cosmos, or Aluna, Apex of Wishes. This is a 5-drop, 6-6, six, six, Flying Trample, Mutate for 6. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land, non-permanent card. Uh, no, sorry, non-land permanent, lol. Uh, put that card into the battlefield and, uh, or into your hand. So you get to pick, actually, which is pretty cool. These spells are accompanied by four passages, two triumphs, nine forests, eight islands, and of course we're rocking the sideboard today, playing traditional. Two Elder Gargaroth, six six for five, vigilance, reach, trample. Whenever it attacks or blocks, create a three three, gain three life, or draw a card. Three additional copies of the Shore Shark, one Wicked Wolf, three three. When it enters the battlefield, you can have it fight up to one target creature you don't control, sacrifice a food from the goose to put a plus one plus one counter on wicked wolf it gains indestructible until the end of turn tap it any field wipes you basically just run your wicked wolf um you know the wicked wolf is great it's not hexproof but what you can do is link it up with the food and give your mutate stack indestructible which is absolutely uh perfect though see two copies of garrick's harbinger for three hexproof from black for three converted mana whenever the harbinger deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker look at that many cards from the top of your library you may reveal a creature card or a garrick planeswalker card from among them putting it into uh your hand right so it's just a great draw um so if the power is four you get to look at the top four and grab one of them absolutely awesome 
two copies of negate instant speed for two counter target on creature spell three copies of soul guide all lantern we all know this for one artifact when it enters the battlefield exile target card from a graveyard and then we can tap it to sacrifice it exiling each opponent's graveyard and pay one to tap it uh sacrificing it as well to draw a card and then of course two additional copies of chain web arachner if there's any rogues in play so that's the deck list that's the sideboard you know as far as your sideboard plays go take out what was bad put in what was good uh you know put in stuff that will stop your opponent's strategy if there's field wipes removal like we talked about the wicked wolf could be pretty cool if there's permanence that you need to balance lots of creatures the shore shark's good you know if it's an aggro match the elder gargroth should shut that down you know control decks now maybe some negates uh negates can also stop the the wipes or their removal on you you know any graveyard shenanigans croaks is still around the soul guide lantern's nice and then the rogues will get shut down by the chain web so that should be your general strategy for the sideboard and the deck list you guys thanks for your time and attention don't forget to watch this video to the very end so you don't miss out on some life-changing once in a lifetime news it's going to be banging thanks for your time and attention again don't forget to comment subscribe share to a friend like the video primarily and uh yeah you can support on twitch patreon youtube and amazon take care and we'll talk to you in a few minutes ayo river how you uh start a good match i love this uh honestly my favorite mutate creature is migratory great horn people are gonna talk all day long about the auspicious sterics i get it uh it's fine but what's just amazing is this great horn you can't sterics without the land is the thing so it's like your first step's more important than your third step Speaking of our first step, Baby Godzilla. Absolutely. It basically signifies that we are 100% playing a mutate deck to our opponent. Um, so that's that. They know this. And now they know that they are going to try to want to, you know, just exile our mutate stack before we start Sterixing. I think the land can go. Over top, obviously. Let's take another island. And the thing is, this is going to grab flying, so I think while we have the chance right now, we should probably just smash in. Slesnia aggro is aggressive, right? So... We're a little worried about it. Oh, an aspirant. Oh, so good. Plus the landfall from the fledging, right? I like how the counters don't leave the landfall, uh, or the fledging is the thing. We're gonna get aggroed out. This is sad. Oh, the short shark is so good. Right, this is uh, only going to cast for two, which is really cool. Um, but everything else comes in tapped, right? So we're not doing anything about any of that. No attacks, end our turn. We shore shark onto our baby Godzilla. Right, we're just gonna knock this fledgling once the plus one plus one gets put on it. Yep. There could be uh, some form of protection for it. I hope not. There's three, uh, oh, four untapped mana. Discarding the land. Again, discarding the land. Over top. We bounce the fledgling. Or at least try to by targeting it. Is there interruption? Slash disruption? No, we get it. So we're resetting the plus one plus ones there. And we've got defenders. Legion Angel is so good. That's a very underrated card. It's just... Oh no. <laughs> Interesting. This, that will be our sixth land. 
No attacks. We're gonna get pummeled by this Legion Angel and his friends. Right? The thing about the Scoot Swarm is there's no reach. <laughs> so this is, you know, curious for us. Typically, we would mutate onto the Great Horn to pull two lands to go crazy with the Scoots, but we're actually gonna do it onto the Shore Shark. Just so we can get the bounce. Oh, a great hand, are you serious? And they uh, they get the draw from it as well. Nice. Oh, oh my god. We can't target them. I think we just go big is the thing. The land. Right, we need that sea dasher. The land again. Over doesn't matter. We pull two land here, which is nice. So this has flash. I think we need to just like hold the phone or what? Keep two mana up. There's nothing for us to eat. Well, this counts as a creature, I guess. We can grab one life. I would love to mutate onto the scoots, but I just I don't see that happening. Let's pass our turn. I think we're too far. Too far gone, right? Fledgling has flying as well. It's like we can't bounce them both. Yeah, let's bounce the fledgling. We still have the Great Horn trigger. Uh, we have to discard it. That sucks. This too. We're going to eat our creatures that we just got rid of. Gain some life. Cry. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do some days. That Great Hand just stops us in our tracks. And we're actually not using, um, you know, the beloved Gem Razor here. Another Legion Angel. Stop it. So good. So good. Alright, we need hysterics off the top. And even then, I'm pretty sure we just die. Rock and roll. That's not gonna work. All right, we need the reach effect, quite literally. And that shore shark as well was like really pleasing for me to see. As far as what we drop, you know, I'm not worried about, uh, you know, like the Gilded Goose is great, but at the end of the day, um, you know, the ooze wasn't required. Puts us at 61. Um, 
just Selesnya counters, hey? I mean, the parcel beast is just like a really cheap mutate which is pretty cool the reach is good here the reach is good there you know i don't really want to drop a shore shark it's pretty valuable for us i'll drop a single parcel beast it shouldn't affect us too much and then we still have the uh gilded goose is an early mutate target not just the symbiote should be okay i think what do you guys think? Playing first here. Uh, yeah, here we go with our Poliwag. We've got a Scoot. It's just how are we going to get into this Gargaroth is the thing. Interesting. Huh. Let's use our mana effectively, and then next turn, if we draw land, we can double drop. But I might just go into the Scoot. It's hard to say. Ugh. Let's double down on a bad idea. Pass our turn. We can defend against this mentor for a second. We're going to need to bounce it, though, as soon as possible. We also probably want to scoot really quick so we can get uh, that value going. Serpent for four. That's disgusting. Let's take our island here. Interesting. Going for the long con here. This is something I've actually not done. I know so many people have complained about it. Breaking the game. I did it on day one and it screwed my client right up. I have not been back since. I'm like, whoa, Scoot Swarm. Don't play that. <laughs> right? Um, so let's see. It needs to be exiled here. If not, and I don't think it is. Oh, maybe it will be. Back up to two mana. I think, yeah, they're targeting it. And there's the takedown. Perfect. Good for them. No blocks. It's upsetting to me. Goose comes in play. Then we're going to Great Horn on top of that. It's the island. The Huron will draw more land is the thing. I don't want to discard either of these either. It's a... You're... Caught between a rock and a hard place here. The land's nice. Don't get me wrong. No attacks. How are we going to survive, though? The Gargaroth is ideally something that we just free cast with our Steric, so it's a little awkward here. Um, especially since we can't reduce the cost of it. Oh, they get a Henge again? Sploosh! The Great Henge is so good, and we don't even have a Gem Razor. At a certain point, right? I'm 
No attacks. The 4 4 reach kind of shuts us down here. Of course they do. Sploosh. <laughs> oh gosh. This is not working out. Taking damage. Ouchies. They have full field plus the henge, so if we bounce any non tokens, they just get like another draw. <laughs> oh, it's just not pleasing. At this point, we just, I guess, go in deep. Maybe we should have sharked first. Yeah, we should have, then we could have gotten a double bounce. You fool. Concerned about the draw, I wanted a double draw instead, because I know we've got to do lots of discarding. <sighs> if I do it now, I get two. If I do it later, I only get one. So we're going to do it now. Oh, man. We got to take that shark. I guess it doesn't really matter. <sighs> Get rid of that. <clears throat> yeah, we're sure, certainly not bouncing that giant killer. Right? And then I guess we can keep this one for instant speed and bounce a bunch of them. Gross. Hashtag not good. Um, yeah, I don't really mind that so much. Really? That's actually a little bit annoying to me. No, we still go for it. We just need to pull hysterics. We have to draw a card and bounce two of their creatures here. It's annoying, and I hate it. Essentially, we're just giving them more draws. Which isn't good for anybody. We definitely need to Sterix harder than we've ever Sterixed before. We're not bouncing the other creatures, so they only get one draw. Oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy, Billy. All right, it's okay. It's a 9-9, 12-12. Great card, man. That looks like a lot of fun. I don't know. Land in play. Sterix on a route. And we've got an octopus to double down. It's a big stack, right? Um, oh, no. We gotta keep the mutate. Over top. I mean, it's not getting through 12 12, don't get me wrong. Until we bounce it. They only have so much mana at a certain point, so if we just f bounce their whole field, then they'll not be able to play everything. Ideally. Oh, we get a very good pull. Scoot Swarm in play first. We have a Fable Passage to crack. Should we hold the phone? I think we should hold the phone. By golly, let's hold the phone. Right? 
Hit for six? Sure, why not? Woo! Let's end our turn. Mmm, I love you, Sterix. I love you. Uh, retreat. This is good. Don't get me wrong. We've got ourselves a match. We're not going zero and two that easy. Give us our win. Let us play round three. Two now. Not even the great henge can save you. <laughs> you know, the deck doesn't have gem razor in it. Uh, that's a thing, I guess. Apparently, the creator thought, no, no need. Oh, wow. Uh, full hand. And they're doing a really good job. At making all of this connect. Oh, everybody gets trample. And the plus ones they put on. That's so good. It's so good. Right? This Celestia counters deck is insane. I have it on my channel if you're interested in seeing it. Um, this is going to be a massive upset here. They're still willing to play at this point. If they could just see what we have in hand. What's our library look like? 21. We have to be cautious with that. That's actually, uh, you know, something to be aware of. Yup. Land, that's fine. Land, that's fine. Cool. Underneath. And we are not bouncing that giant killer. LOL. But both of these mentors can go. We can play a land that triggers the scoot. Take action there. Take action here. Scoot city. And we draw. Um, we have no more basic land, so this Fable Passage is sitting pretty. Pass to blockers. Uh, we should probably keep... Well, no, we've got massive defense here. Um, that's just a very weird situation. I guess just toss our two sharks into the fray. Right? Two for one for them, but we've got definitely field supremacy here. My turn. That's <laughs> absolutely amazing. Passage in play for the scoots, baby. Yeah, I would like to mutate onto the scoots so they went crazy, right? But we can have them as one ones. That's okay. We're going to save this as a land next turn, just to trigger the scoots again. And, uh... This is real weird, but... Do we just have lethal? Right, they block this damage, so they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But then they hit us with a huge amount of trample. Cancel attacks, no attacks, and turn. We get them next time, right? I think it's a little too soon. We need like no exile. Shattered the Sky would win them the game. Yes, go crazy with your blockers. We might need to do it the turn after next turn because we're going to make a bunch of scoots and that's going to be our key. Victory. All this trample is annoying though. They gain vigilance is the thing. Hmm. They're down to 35. They've got plenty of juice left. Do we have enough to block here? I almost don't think we do. Yikes. Hmm. 
We should have mutated onto the scoots at some point. So they were bigger bodies, but we were trying just to get enough value to survive out. The more you know, it's still a very good match. Gosh dang it. I don't think we can defend against this. That's just like super duper lethal. Well, not really, right? Three of them have summoning sickness. We could make out okay. Gotta go on trample. And these are like plus twos each. Plus threes. Oh my god. Huh. I don't think we can block that. Oh, we definitely can't. Do you have food tokens as well, though? These are freaking mutate stack. Mm, I think they got us. I think this was a. Uh... Very big brained play here. They got more? No way. What could they have for two? What's going on? Alright, this is not good. Four, eight, twelve, <laughs> eighteen, uh, twenty four. Protection from multicolored, uh. Ah, uh, so 20. What else is multicolored? Look at Dora. Frick, the protection from multicolored is going to get us. So we've got 10, 14, uh, 15. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> 4, 8, 10. 13, 14, 15. And then we're super duper dead because of the multicolor protection. Dang. I'm still gonna use, oh my God, this is painful. Our opponent's probably so mad at us for not conceding. What, it will only select them all. Oh, okay, okay, um, just, just, uh, whatever. Oh! Sometimes the user interface is just... spot on. I was trying to do it, but now I just feel bad for holding them up. <laughs> Try. I think we could probably keep this. It doesn't look great, but it's not the worst. Typically, we want to free cast these, but... Hey, we'll take anything we can get. Especially that MDFC uh, forest or green source. So good. I would call it a forest, but it's just a land. It's actually not a type of land. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's hold this passage and try to double crack it on a scoot. That'd be pretty cool, right? So, you know, there's going to be lots of removal, is the thing, right? Lots of removal. So, if we play this Scoot, we can almost guarantee it gets blasted. But, we're not going to give them a whole other turn. We do have to act at a certain point. It's definitely maybe too loud to be recording. We have roofers here, and it's, it's just going to get worse. You're going to be, like, ripping shingles off and stuff. Fucking hammering. <laughs> we have to get this match dealt with. And that's what we were talking about. Heartless Act. Uh, the Scoot. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so busted. Well, why aren't I winning any matches? Right? Why is it getting removed all the time? Answer me that. Uh, that's some of the things that I like. Um, you know, about the weaker creatures. Like we see Lotus Cobra as well. A 2-1. Keyword 1 on that toughness. <laughs> that's interesting. Do we try to pull the removal with a parcel beast? No. Or do we parcel beast on top of the scoot immediately? 
it would cost us five. Which we would have. I like that this is so cheap, but we want to Great Hornet. If it's instant speed removal, they'll have it anyways. Let's play our Parcel Beast. I'm, uh, I'm worried about removal. You know what I mean? Um, the Mutate decks are just that. You've got to be so careful. Uh, like, the removal will get you. And I feel like they've got it. So, yeah. Um, I think that's a good read by us. Not trying to go for it. Trying to just hold out. Try to play it a little safer. Uh, getting rid of that instant speed removal, right? Trying to get as much of that gone as possible. Another trident down to two cards in hand. I think we go for it. Let's see if we can pull anything else. Or we go right to Vivian. We do go right to Vivian, don't we? Again, sorry about all that background banging. That's absolute cancer. Vivian in play and plus to make a 3-3. Three, three. Right? They don't get a chance to interact with it until now. This is my paradise. At which point the 3-3 three, three has already been made. It's going to have reach. Right? You never know if a rankle hits play. We don't want that to happen. I think Reach is one of her better ones as far as defensive abilities. Right, it's got Trample as well. And Vigilance. Vigilance is an offensive, and Trample is offensive, but Reach can be defensive, right? Just chilling. Okay, so there's a little bit more of this removal. And I think they're going to double down on it. Wow. See, this is good. Playing Vivian was good. She will die. We can pull a land. Oh, we've got a Sterix on top. Well, who doesn't remove a Sterix? You have to remove Sterixes, right? All right, not too shabby. That's definitely something you have to go out of your way to remove. We need another land. If we don't, we're gonna Great Horn onto the Sterix. I wanna be mutating onto this Scoot, but at a certain point, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, there's the land. They're totally tapped, right? They've got one black source, it's not happening. Here's our Scoot. Here's our Great Horn onto the Scoot. It goes over top. It's going to help protect it. And we're going to pull land. Right? Now we get a copy of the Great Horn. That's actually relatively ideal. Um, no attacks. We're cutting it so close with six life. This is terrifying. If they have any removal, we're super duper screwed. We have to mutate onto this Great Horn. I guess. That's our best bet to make sure that we're pulling enough land. And we might be able to get out ahead. It's going to be really hard. Proxa gets our Ghidorah. Slash. Uh, a Luna. Gross. At a certain point.
The death touch gets him. Not good. Our scoots are six sixes. It's not a great pull, but you know, we're gonna get a little bit. <laughs> Couple more lands. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. We're talking about an army of sterixes now, baby. You thought you could mess with us? Uh, technically, all they really need to do is play this Krokza a couple more times. Um, or even attack us a couple more times, so I don't think it's going to work. Um, if they have another Krokza in hand, they'll win. Because the attack does three, and then we'll take three from the new one. But if not, I think we are able to attack them for lethal next turn, right? So it's gonna it's coming down to the wire here. This is a very close match. The Trident, sure. Oh, they can't play it. They can't play it. They just milled it. That's really good. We take three damage. Uh we block. Of course, we have to block everyone. That's a good game. Oh my gosh, that was so close. Woo! Oh my lord and lantern. So, a lot of removal here. A lot of removal. That's the scary part. And a lot of hand hate. I don't mind the hexproof from black, but at a certain point. <laughs> that Kroxa, it's. Uh, it's mm. Vivian's good. I liked Vivian. I think this Shore Shark might be more applicable than the Huron. Just to bounce those zombie tokens, I think that will help us out in still keeping a high mutate uh, total. You know, we're going down in life quick, which makes me want Gargaroth, but man, does that suck when it just falls into your hand. Let's kick out a Ghidorah. Let's take a Gargaroth. It's a good card, but... Do we want to be exiling their graveyard? Yes. We'll drop the Arichner. We'll drop not the Ooze. The Ooze should stay. We'll drop the Octopus, which is not great in the Huron. That way we have these early mutate targets within the Goose. I think that's still really good. Hopefully we get a really nice draw hand. Well, that's not it. We have to toss this. This looks better. And we should toss this Sterix, but we will toss an island instead. Right? Oh, that's a nice pickup. That is a nice pickup, boys and girls. Ghouls and goblins. That's what I should refer to you guys as for the month of October. This is spooky. Right? What are you guys' favorite Halloween movies? What have you been watching? I just watched a brand new series called Devs, and it has, uh, I don't know the actor's name, but Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. He's the bad guy in it. Oh, man, our boy Ron plays a nasty villain. Wow, this is not nice. I'm gonna drop our shark, I guess. We really need to Great Horn. And we go now or we go next turn and save that for the Sterix. I think we should go now, even though it taps it. Oh man. We lose our food. 
over top Avi, but I think it's gonna get removed, and that's sad. We get a little ramp, right? Get a little bit of ramp. That's not bad. What we need is that Soul Guide Lantern. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, ooh, where's that at? Uh, we're sitting on three. We played a four. Sterix isn't until six. <laughs> we need another. Oh, oh god. See, this is what I was talking about. That removal on the stack is heavy. I'm gonna just go wide and bash him down. I think. Oh, this is fun. Hmm. Delicio. Where are you, Cruxa? There you are. I take you home with me. Come meet my family. We're gonna keep the passage until we can, uh, you know, try to snag that precious little scoot of ours from the El Librarian. One, two, three, four. We draw five. We're getting closer. Don't you dare. We're gonna grab the life, right? Why not just grab the life? You know, it's a good card, Blood Chief's Thirst. This is a very good card. I like it. We're going to have to punch their, through their removal somehow. And, um, you know, we are ready to Sterix, but... Well, actually, they've got Hand Hate. At a certain point, we should do it. And not hold it in hand. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. You know there's instant speed removal in that hand. You just know it. Let's try it. Let's try it. It hits. It hits. It copies. That's our sixth land. It's st still on the trigger, baby. They get a chance to do it again here. They'll be wasting removal. Get another land. That's good. Now the Scoodle, they remove the one, but we come out with two. If there's no hand hate, we are very lucky. If they have us discard, not a good day. No discard, two thumbs up. Suza Maze, if you're on stream right now, I'm telling you, you gotta eat my hand away. Let me check who's online. We don't see it. We do not see it. If there's no disruption, that's game. There's got to be removal on the scoot. Over top, it makes 6-6 six, six Derrickses now. Hopefully we pull a land. That's a weird thing to say, right? Okay, Parcel Beast, we'll pull a land the old-fashioned way. Boom. It already is on the stack, so if they remove it, it's already copied itself as a 6-6. Six, six. What we will lose is our mutate stack, though, right? That's fine. We... Keep hysterics, which is really good. Right? The land organically made its own, and then the, uh, the mutate made itself. All right. So they're down to four cards. They have four land. We have no hand. We need to top deck mutates. Oh, are you serious? Odds. Oh, they hit evens? What? I'm saying oops. And I'm gonna give him a hug. Is there a sorry? That's heartbreaking, you guys. That is so sad. But a win's a win's a win. Alrighty then. I think the deck's pretty cool. Uh, Mutate's awesome. Omnath not in standard is amazing. Um, rogues are there, but we're not seeing a ton of them, so it's actually not really getting under our skin yet. We heard someone play 32 rounds the other day, 27 were against rogues. I don't even know how that's possible, but at a certain point, just mainboard against it. If so much of the meta is one thing, make a deck that shuts it down. If you guys want, if you're interested, if there's enough love on this video i'll make an anti-road deck for you i got you covered i can do it easy peasy lemon squeezy big woofs thanks for your time and attention don't forget to like comment subscribe blah 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 
most importantly, you guys, go have yourselves an amazing day. Take some time for yourself, some big breaths, some self-love, and we'll see you all again soon with another Magic the Gathering Arena video from your boy, Hello Good Game. Take care.